Welcome to Adam Explains, where I break down tough topics and give you the facts. Today's video is on the four phases of the hair growth cycle, and I'll be explaining in detail what to expect at each stage. Before we begin, if I could take this time to request that you like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this video. But without further ado, let's get into it. We shed hairs on a regular basis, as many as 50 to 100 per day, so it should come as no surprise that despite the hair being intrinsically dead, it does have a life cycle. The hair growing currently is not the same hair that you were born with. In fact, like many mammals, humans even have seasonal shedding, particularly in the autumn, according to Swedish researchers. Before we continue, it should be noted that the hair follicle exists below the skin, therefore trimming or shaving, which are just acts of cutting hair to an arbitrary length, will not change or affect the growth cycle of your hair. Plucking, waxing or threading on the other hand will affect the growth cycle. In the hair growth cycle, there are four phases, anagen, catagen, telogen and exogen. Anagen is the state in which hair actually grows, the rate of which is 0.5 inches per month on average. The amount of time a hair will remain in the anagen phase will vary from person to person, although scientists estimate between 4-6 to six years for your scalp hair. Body hair is said to have shorter anagen phases. The anagen phase is particularly interesting depending on the type of hair follicle you are studying. In men and women with androgenic alopecia, the hormone dihydrotestosterone shortens the anagen phase and militarizes the follicles on the vertex of the scalp, whereas androgenic hair, such as chest hair and beards, are dependent upon dihydrotestosterone to grow. The anagen phase can also be cut short through a number of factors, including stress, poor diet and ageing. Once the anagen phase ends, the catagen phase begins. The catagen phase refers to the period of time in which the hair detaches from the blood vessels and dermal papilla and the hair stops growing, because the blood flow is removed, depriving the follicles of much needed oxygen and nutrients to actually grow the hair. This lasts for approximately two weeks and acts as a catalyst for the next phase. Telogen. The telogen phase is where the hair follicle rests for approximately three months before starting the anagen phase again. In rare circumstances, people can suffer what is known as a telogen effluvium, which is a noticeable thinning caused by long, severe daily shedding periods and a longer telogen phase, which may be a result of poor diet, stress, deficiencies in vitamins and minerals, or a combination of all of the above. Usually, after three months, the exogen phase will start. The exogen phase, which is actually just an extension of the telogen phase, is where the hair sheds and new hair simultaneously starts to grow and begin a new anagen period. As mentioned previously, you can shed up to 100 hairs per day and not even notice. You're probably wondering why you aren't going completely bald every few years for a three month period. Well, each hair follicle is a complex mini organ which has its own biological clock and is independent. So while some will be synchronized simply by coincidence, it will be incredibly rare for all to synchronize completely. As stated previously, shedding is an ongoing process and may be seasonal and indeed even gender dependent, as research suggests that women experience slightly higher rates of telogen than men do during July, which sees the telogen hairs fall out over three months later in mid-October or November. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I've been Adam at Adam Explains and I'll see you guys again next time.